I'm Hamid Al Salman, uh, the film uh, director and writer of Raven Song, which is a feature film uh, participating on the competition at Ritzy Film Festival. Hi, uh, Ibrahim Al Khairalla. Um, I'm an actor and producer, writer. Uh, in the Raven Song, I'm only a supporting actor. And uh, I got three more films in the festival, two of them. One is Al Khalat Plus, which is the bl blender. The other is Satar, the wrestling film, and the other is uh, Psychological Horror. It's a short film. So I'm with uh, Muhammad in, uh, in the Raven Song for the feature film and for the Kura, which is a football, in the short competition as well. Raven Song is the very first short, uh, the very first feature film that I was writing. And uh, I decided to uh, explore the era of Saudi Arabia in 2002. That was very interesting to me because uh, I was I'm a 90s kid and I grew up and I noticed all those different characters the uh, like the clash of ideologies and 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 uh, and the intellectual groups and the cultural uh, uh, scene in Saudi Arabia and uh, uh, to to do this in in a way that it's both uh, sarcastic and you can also empathize with the the characters is to see it through a simple and naive uh, man that gets in trouble with those groups. First of all, um, we in Tafazal Evan believe in the voice of the Saudi director and the writers. So we love Mohammed Salman. We've seen him in a short film called uh, 27 Chaban. Um, it was an amazing short film. And when he decided and he came to us, he said, I have a film. It's a feature film. I was like... Muhammad, you're crazy. I'm going to be with you. First time I read the script, I was like, Muhammad, I need to sit down with you. This is the first time I do the this type of character. He's, he's, he's this guy, kind of a character that when you ask him for help, you really don't want his answer. You really don't want his help. But you have to ask him because he's everywhere. He's, he's just a, a normal guy. So when I sat down with him, I went to Al-Ahsa. He's from al Eastern provision and from Riyadh. I went for him. I said, like, I want to sit down with you. We sat for three days. Every day I read a part and explain, please. Tell me more. And thanks God there is an internet right now. He was sending me links. Look at this movement. This is the body language. This is how we speak. This is your character. This should be funny and not funny sometimes. And thank you, Muhammad, for the role. It's an amazing role. I loved it. I loved it yeah. so much. It was a blast to, to work with Ibrahim uh, and all of the cast, actually. Um, the, the film was um, challenging in that, in that side as well because uh, we had a lot of characters. Um, even some of them are just minor characters, but I don't want them to come on the screen and just say a line. I want you to kind of understand where they're coming from and their background. And that's why we have, I've chosen Riyadh to make the film. Because in Riyadh, as a capital, you will meet people from the Eastern province, where I am from, or from Yumbo, and they all have different dialect. And as the locals, I made this film for the local audience, and as a local, you can understand why is he different, why is he speaking this way, uh, why is he doing that. Um, and that being done through a proper casting uh, and rehearsals, uh, for example, with Ibrahim, who spent a long time in Rehearsing, re doing the rehearsals, and because he's a creative writer, we worked on developing the dialogue to to make it uh, real. It's coming from the streets, not only just a forced dialogue uh, that I'm putting in his mouth. In Saudi Arabia, we're, we're, uh, we we used to be very small com community that's really growing, but because we all started when the cin the cinema was not there, we were passionate. We we're like I'm an engineer who like cares for cinema he want to make films and Brahim I think he studied IT right finance, uh, finance. finance. so um so we, we we only had this as a hobby first till Fazadash when they got the digital tools they started doing sketches on YouTube and in Eastern province we were like making films for local uh film festival that's in Dammam and that's where we met when I did my second uh short films called Tank and I met uh, Ali Al-Kalthami, uh, who's a co-founder in Tilfaz, and Ibrahim Khairallah and Ala uh, Fadin, who they are, those three are the founders of Tilfaz. And then uh, I made 
uh, my third short film was which was called 27 Sha'ban and they loved it and they wanted to work with me and we produced together a fourth short film of mine which was called Curtain those two last short films are available in Netflix as a part of um, a series called Six Windows in the Desert they're different short films they don't have a connection it just they're they're independent but they were chosen and selected to bo- to be as uh, as a one program uh, so when i had this um, script uh, because there now we had a collaboration before i approached them and we talked about it but for uh, ibrahim character in the like i think the fifth draft i realized that i'm writing this for ibrahim and i was telling him and um, uh, I, I talked to him about it, and yeah, because it's different, it's experimental, it's not, I, I wouldn't say it's like, I, I was not very targeting the to, to be fully commercial, and, and I, I know Ibrahim is uh, in, in, in the young and the youth generation, he's a pretty nun uh, on, the, on YouTube, and uh, this is like his first appear in a feature film, so it was also a, uh, a, a debut for him as well. Yeah. So uh, we had this discussion. He said he's a 90s boy, I'm an 80s boy. And uh, we used to rent the VHS videos from the shops. And we are we are used to the binge watch. So for me in the weekend, I used to rent like 15, 10 films. Me and my brother, we just collect the 15 real, that's 25 real, just to collect it and bring films and watch it again and again and again and again. We watch the film for a week because we need to bring it back to the video shop again and take another film. So um, it started with the VHS and we're watching. And then um, 11 years ago, me and my partners, as Mohammed said, started something online. Thank you, the digital camera. It let, let us just go and free content. Used to do sketches. And from that point, we believe that the cinema is going to come no matter when, no matter what. We need to tell the Saudi stories by us. This Saudi stories need to be spoken by Saudi actors, writers, directors. The world wanted to know about Saudi Arabia and their stories. And there is a lot of stories, a lot of stories. And you name it, you can, we have the, uh, we have something like Pablo Escobar, we have something like Heist, we, we, we've got all the stories and nobody knows about it. And nobody knows about it. I know a lot of people in the States, they thought that we move with camels still. And no, it's not like that. It's, it's a lot of rich stories, a lot of love stories, a lot of action stories. And this is our mission. We need to tell the stories, the amazing stories from this amazing country. Like Ibrahim said, we were very, like, Saudi, Saudi uh, people are very good consumers for entertainment. And uh, that's why there is a lot of uh, film productions in, in Dubai just for the Saudi audience. We had, uh, there was productions, but not, uh, bro- like film, film uh, TV productions and uh, designed for the Saudi audience, but it was outside the country. Um, and also we knew uh, film from like since we were born because we, there was the CDs rent. Also there was a, a national uh, channel that's it's called uh, Channel 2 where you can watch American films. Uh, it's there. Um, but the theaters were not there, right? And uh, there were not also this um, like initiatives to... Uh, enable the youth to tell the stories. So what the ones that were doing TV shows, they're just like very non-producers. Uh, it's really hard to break through. And when the digital cameras came in, not only enabled the stories, I think they enabled the whole generation okay. at that time. Like even the US now, uh, they don't have to use 35 millimeters. I mean, they can just get their Canon in 2005 and 2007 and tell their stories. But for us, that kind of um, formed a new voice. And also those who work in the TV, uh, they noticed that the audience was actually reacting more to what the young generation is telling. And they're, because they were kind of disconnected from uh, the the 80s and 90s kid, that they had to tell their own story. So, uh, as I was telling before, 
um, we were very passionate. Uh, I didn't have uh, kind of a, a financial a financial plan for this. I didn't know that I'll be able to make my very first feature film this soon. I didn't really expect that. Expected that. Uh, when I did um, my very first short film, it was called Amongst, which is in between. Um, I want. I did it because I was in love with the idea. I, I, there was something, some visuals and sounds in my mind. I wanted to get off, to get off, and uh, to my surprise, it was chosen as the opening film for the local uh, film festival in Demam. And I remember that day because that film festival, we d- we didn't market it that much because we were afraid, right? Uh, because there were other social groups, they were not gonna. It might backlash on us. Uh, so we're like the the art scene was there, but it was not uh, thriving as as much as what's happening. As yeah, the, the rest of the films. Also, he's lucky. I'm sorry, Mohammed, to cut you. He's lucky. He's from Eastern Provision, very close to Bahrain. They go to the weekend to the cinema. For me oh, yeah. in Riyadh, I need four hours, five hours driving. So oh. for me. Um, we used to travel just to watch films in the cinema. We, my first film was seeing in Syria, and it was Troy. All right? So that experience is amazing because Syrian people, they love to interact with the film. When Troy did the first uh, like uh, sword uh, snapping here, Everyone was like, yeah, <laughs> get him, get him, yeah. Brad Bitt. If they forget about the gifts, like, get him, Brad Bitt. So, yeah, I'm sure you got a lot of experience yeah. in this. Anyway. Yeah, like adding to this, yeah. um, uh, it's interesting. I find it very interesting and ironic in a, in a good way that Abdullah Al Ayaf, who's now the CEO of Fil- Film Commission, uh, was one of the people that really inspired me to do to make films yeah. uh, because there were like few of them. He's the one who made short films that traveled over the world in international film festivals. And one, I think the very first short film he did, it was called 500 Kilometers to Cinema, which is a documentary of a guy traveling from Riyadh to Bahrain just yep. to watch a film. And now he's leading the change uh, to enable his, uh, we used to be his colleagues, so uh, to, to enable us and the, the new voices and the new young generation to tell their own story and to get the tools and uh, the finance and everything. When we used to travel to uh, festivals like Cannes Film Festival, Venice Film Festival, and I always imagine when is the time all of you guys come in my country and do an international film festival? It's amazing. I cried the first day. I was like, it's happening. It's happening. The last, uh, the first one, uh, it was after COVID. It was amazing, but this one is beyond amazing. And I can't imagine myself talking to an American uh, newspaper about a film, international film festival happening in Jeddah. That's a dream, a dream come true, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. And uh, I think it's really amazing that now people are coming in to watch the films, not only um, experiencing the, the, the films and understanding how the common man and co- co- common w- woman uh, feels and what the, like the challenges and the experiences in the film, but also they can talk to the local audience and, and share the experience with them in the, in the theaters. Uh, so as uh, uh, Ibrahim uh, was saying, um, it's, it's really great to have an outlet to connect to the world. And they're coming to us. They're they're walking the city, and they they can also travel in the country. They can come. They can also go to Al Hasa. I'm gonna yeah. market to my yeah. hometown, um, uh, and um, like they w- would get the right uh, experience, and they can see by their own eyes. I always watch the Hollywood films, and when I see Saudi character made in the um, from the American films, I see the Shumag is like this, and it's not doing very well, and the Agal is like this. Yeah. I was like, I wish I can work for free, guys, for you. Just I will provide everything. I will fix it. I will make it right. I love you guys. Please make yeah, it you right. Can't, you can't imagine how this this the locals, because we it's like. It's like you're wearing the tie up, uh, upside down. Yeah, like here. Wearing for the us, tie. it's hard to watch. 
and uh, yeah, I even mean, like big TVs and 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 films. They uh, I think they got all the 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 tools to just hire one Arabic man to do it. It's, yeah. I mean, it's funny. Not, not That's why Arabic, like uh, there is this yeah. uh, uh, like thrive to we're gonna tell our our own stories. We're gonna have the right portrait of uh, how we live, how we dress, how we oh, talk. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, so actually, I was talking to a friend uh, um, last night who has a film here, and he said uh, a Western journalist told him, "Your film not may be able to make it because your character says Allah Akbar too many times." Mm. I told him, oh, "Well, that's a good thing. Let them know how we use it and when we use yeah, it. Yeah, not not the you know, uh, normal. It's the right thing. Using, like, yeah, yeah we, we use it every time. It's like." And in different cases and different uses. And different meaning. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, God grace is to the God greatest. and God, God is a great. Yeah. So you, you say it in your normal day when, like even you're in, you, you want to stand up and you wanna, kinda, you're want you facing trouble standing up, you might say it. Yeah. Sometimes it's like you a say prayer. It, sometimes you say it, you say, yeah. hey, come with me, you have time. Say, but it's, sometimes it's, yeah. it's different how you pronounce it. You so. can literally say this to someone, it's like you're telling him you're lying. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Allah Akbar. Like a it's big like yeah, lie. Like, I can't Allah believe Akbar. you. Allah Akbar. It's you like know? yeah. Yeah, but uh yeah, by the like, I think the West they understand the word in just one yeah. context. We had a uh, like similar uh project called Al Wadi Cinema. We are trying to repeat all the old films, all the classic films. We want the young kids to live what the old generation and the, the good filmmakers start. We really want to do that. We want the new generation to watch the old and the new and to see the difference between the composing, the the colors, the the way of and, filming. And this is actually happening. Now you mentioned it. Even in uh, movie and Fox uh, yeah. cinemas, I've seen them rescreening Batman and Titanic. And uh, they, they they do this because they, they realize the local audience, they didn't get the chance to see it in a big screen. Uh, so now when you mentioned it, yeah. this is actually happening. After COVID, as we know, maybe Saudi is going to be the third biggest market after Amazon State and the China. So it's growing. It's doubled um, more than the, uh, the other uh, markets. Yeah. So we love cinema and we are hungry to watch all the films, the can old I, and can new. Can I add one thing? Sure. Uh, like the, now the world is experiencing Netflix uh, coming in and then like the moviegoers are getting um, their the numbers of moviegoers are getting reduced right so and 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 here it's quite the opposite we used to watch being watch and watch the films uh, in our homes and TV but the theater is the new experience it's not Netflix which is like we we, we watch both and we love both but going out and the out in the public meeting people, uh, and having a lot of outdoor activities in all different sectors is actually uh, new to us after the country opened up. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if you go to Riyadh, you would spend your day outside of your house. But we used to be the opposite. We used, like, we used to have fun and all of our activities are inside watching films in, in houses, but now we have theaters, so it's quite the opposite.